Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're going to be starting a brand new course, and this course is going to be on the FabFilter Pro L. The FabFilter Pro L is a brick wall limiter, and when they say brick wall limiter, that means that nothing goes above zero, nothing goes above unity. So it's very useful on the final stage of mastering. In this first video, uh, one of ten is going to be on the intro and UI. I just said the intro, so now I'm going to be going over the UI. So we have our top part. I'm just going to be going over this briefly. Uh, these are your presets. We're not going to be touching these. Uh, this lock feature I'm going to kind of explain later. Oh, also, if you hover over any sort of button or option, the help will uh, pop out. And if you don't see that, click on help and then click show interactive help units. So what this does is this uh, kind of uh, locks the output uh, and the gain, uh, the dither settings and the oversampling settings. So when you're going through presets, uh, you, you can kind of accurately compare and see what's going on. We're not going to be going through presets, feel free to, uh, but we're not going to be doing that because we're going to be learning about everything and doing it uh, in hard mode. This little square button means we're going to full screen and uh, this is a great way in all FabFilter uh, plugins so you can visually see and just focus on what you're doing. It's a pretty neat feature. The full full screen on the uh, EQ they have is uh, pretty good. So the majority of the UI is the readout of your audio. I'll just show you briefly what's going on here. All right. So this would be our audio, these little peaks here. That line is the RMS. Right now it's very low. So when we increase the gain, the, the, main, the main star of the show, which is a slider, we're going to boost the gain. And I need to boost this in order to show you what's going on. Check this out. Right, so that red stuff is the gain reduction. And that white is the RMS. RMS means uh, root mean square. And it's basically showing you the average level, which we'll get into. That's the main part of the UI. This slider here, or not slider, this uh, kind of LED strip or whatever is showing you the, the, uh, the output. This number here shows the output number. We are actually clipping over. Uh, 0 0.2 because the inner sample peaks coming through which we'll get into rectify that it's just uh, the nature of audio and this right here shows our gain reduction you can see that again we're getting a lot of heavy gain reduction but uh, yeah that's just an example you have the ability to turn both of those off you can really focus on what's going in you have your uh, scale. So right now you can make it kind of very broad, which is a 48 dB. So the scale changes to negative 48 dB. So you can see more of the, the music. And then you can zoom in uh, 32 dB, dB, 16 dB, which will show you more zoomed in. You can see the peaks even more closely, right? Uh, and then you have your K metering system, which is a, uh, an attempt to standardize uh, loudness, which we will also get into. So those are your metering options. You have your advanced over here, which we'll get into. FabFilter ProL, it's very program dependent. It really depends on what you feed it. So there's like an all-round um, limiting style. There's dynamic, punchy, and transparent. You can also adjust your look ahead attack and release. All stuff we're going to get into, uh, but that's the advanced part. Uh, MIDI learn, if you're so inclined. You're oversampling. What this does is this increases the resolution of the audio being fed into it. Typically, for mastering, you're going to want uh, at least two times or four times to combat the uh, inner sample peaks. And with very high gain, peaks do come through. And with that being said, uh, you can adjust the output here. 
by uh, varying degrees also just by clicking on the output there. Uh, so just to give yourself a little bit of headroom, and you really should give yourself a little bit of headroom and that avoids peaks coming through. Because when peaks come through, you clip, and that doesn't sound that great. Uh, you have your dither if you're going from, uh, you know, 32 to 24, 22, 20, 18, or 16 bits. Uh, if you're not kind of going from any other f uh, bit depth, then you can leave it. Um, what dithering does is it avoids quantization errors by adding a low level amount of noise. And that's just a topic in and of itself. And you can, you can change your uh, noise shape and stuff like that. This is the bypass button. It will effectively bypass everything. And then you have your little view down here, which I am going to leave in this size so we can accurately see what's going on. So fab filter should not be added at the end of, of your project. It should be added right away. The first thing I do when I have this in my default template, I have fab filter pro Q and then I have fab filter pro L right at the end. So I can work on my track and if there's any kind of peaks, it'll uh, kind of keep it from clipping. It's a general practice. I used to have uh, the L2 on here, but now I'm all about the uh, Pro L just because it's so transparent. You can't go wrong. What else? Yeah, that is basically it. Um, we'll be back with another video. Hope you learned stuff. Take care and have a good one.